How you doing? I'm Matt. Today I'm going to show you five different ways to joint boards without a jointer. Five methods include a piece of plywood, building your own jig, using a simple four foot level, just using tape, and then also using a circular saw. Let's get started. For a lot of woodworkers, this is a big challenge to be able to find a way to joint lumber without buying a jointer because jointers are expensive. So if you've watched this channel any time at all, you know that before I was blessed with that Wahuda jointer, that I was jointing with my table saw just using a level. This is probably the easiest way to get started jointing boards. It's not the best way, but it will get you by. So it will not make a perfectly tight seam every time, especially when you get into longer boards over about four feet. However, on shorter boards, it works very well. Let me show you how I do it. First and foremost, for this for this method to work, your blade has to be 90 degrees to your saw. So if it's not, then it's not gonna, your seam isn't gonna come out right. Gotta be 90 degrees. If it's not 90 degrees, you're wasting your time. And I'll drop a link in the description below one of those little digital angle finders if you're interested. So I'm gonna be jointing the edge of this board using a four foot level. And all this is, is you just take a four foot, I like this I-beam aluminum style because it's not gonna bend and twist on you like a plastic. The reason this works, I get a lot of questions on why this works versus just using the fence. So the real reason this actually works is using a level on the table saw, I'm actually magic. I've, I've actually uh, sprinkled some magic dust on this, uh, some magic sawdust on this level, and it, now it works because it's magic. <laughs> the reason this method works is because you're giving this edge a flat surface reference on the other side. So whatever's going on over here on the right side of the, of the blade, when it goes through the blade, then that's what's gonna happen over here on the left. If I just use the fence, and I'm gonna exaggerate, but if this board was had a big bow in it like this, when I'm pushing it through, it'll actually do that on the blade. You wouldn't think it would, but it does in a small way. But that's just gonna leave a, a, a non-flat, non-square cut on this side. When you use something like a four foot level, and it must, it must go through at the same time or move with the board. If it does not move with the board, you might as well just use the fence. If you're just doing this and pushing it by, it's no different than the fence. All you've done is extend your fence. Let's try. I'm gonna do two boards and then I'll line them up beside each other and show you. So now you can see it is not exactly perfect, but it's really, really close. I could probably run it through one more time and get it much better. All right, I run it through again. You can see, man, this thing is really, really close. I mean, you can tell the difference in the grain patterns there, but I mean, that's just jointing with a level right there, so not bad. The second method on jointing with a table saw, you're just gonna build a simple jig for your saw using three quarter inch plywood. Let me show you. So I'm gonna rip this down to six inches. What I did was just marked where the riving knife and the blade is. And then I'm gonna clamp this here, move it over out of the way. I'm just gonna take the riving knife off. So I'm just gonna turn the blade on or turn the saw on and raise the blade up and it's gonna make that cut. Then I will turn the saw off, unclamp it and move this back this way until it gets to the riving knife mark. I, I was actually originally gonna uh, raise the blade up, leave it spinning and then pull the plywood back. But the thread of kick back there is way too much for me to actually want to do that. So what I did was just turn the blade on, raise it up, turn the saw off lower the blade, move the jig, raise it, clamp it back down, then raise that blade back up like that. Once most of the material was cut out of there, then you saw me slide it kind of back and forth and get any irregularities out of there. That's a big word, irregularities. All right, it took me just a minute to figure that one out, but uh, it looks really good. And I can actually, the more I do it, the tighter that seam is getting. Uh, you can see it's pretty tight as is when I push it together and then I can actually, you know, release it there. So one way to make this even better as a jointing jig is if you could take and put a piece of vinyl and stick it here, uh, something that's slick, it won't actually hang the board as it goes through, but it makes this backside stick out just a little bit uh, about the same thickness as what you're actually taking off the lumber. That'll give this a flat surface to reference to 
after it's been cut on this side and it'll just make jointing a little easier using this method. However, it does work even without that, but adding a piece of vinyl or something here on the backside will help you out. So that method actually works fairly well. Just for a quick jointing jig for your table saw, it's just a piece of plywood running up through there. It took me several passes to figure out what, how to do it properly. Extremely light pressure and take very, very little off of the material at a time. 64th, if that, just, just barely skimming it. Once you do that, you wind up with a good tight seam as equal to or about as equal to as the level jig. Now I've got another one I wanna try and see if we can get it even better. Let's do it. If this video is bringing you value, click that share button, share it with your friends or family member who is also into woodworking and hopefully it can bring them value as well. This is just an eight inch strip of plywood, three quarter inch. Now I'm going to make a jig. So I'm actually gonna make a jointing jig or you could actually use it as a tapering jig as well for tapering legs, that sort of thing. And what I'm gonna use to do that is a router, this uh, quarter inch relief bit and a quarter inch or a half inch dovetail bit from micro jig as well as some uh, dovetail clamps that's gonna go in this jig. It's gonna make jointing on a table saw that much easier for you. If you don't have this stuff, there'll be a link in the description below to this stuff. It's not that expensive to get started with this and they have several other options you can pick up if you want to get into that system. All right, so this is what I've done. I got my sheet of plywood cut out and I've marked uh, four inches from the end on each end. I'm gonna draw a line because that's where my dovetail groove will go. And you just make this board however long your fence is, and then you're gonna mark halfway of that distance, whatever that is for you. Make a line, and then halfway between these two lines, we're gonna make another line so that we can have uh, another groove here. And then we've got uh, two marks, two inches from each end there. We'll make a mark down through there, and then that'll be our grooves that we're gonna cut. I don't have a router table, so that's gonna make things just a little bit more time consuming, but it's not, I don't think it's gonna be impossible to do. Uh, you set this quarter inch relief bit and we have to cut the quarter inch grooves first. That way the dovetail bit doesn't actually have to take out as much material. Uh, it'll make it last longer. It'll make it a cleaner cut, et cetera, et cetera. So what I gotta do is set up a line, route that, change bits, route that, and over and over until I get them all done. So that's gonna take a little bit of time. So all I did was lined up I put my router down there, lined up the center of the bit with the line, and then I just measured from there to the line and squared everything up. Gonna be a whole lot of blade changing. Man, I need a router table. I don't know why I was going the wrong way, but I was, don't do that. So that's the dovetail track. And I bought these clamps that fit the dovetail track, just like that. That's awesome. This is gonna be an awesome sled. Here we go. I gotta finish up these grooves and then I'll show you what this thing can do. Lesson number one, don't pull the bit up. <laughs> it'll make a hole. I think it'll be all right though, but don't pick the, the router up with the dovetail bit bad idea. So I've got all those grooves cut in there, those dovetails cut in there with that uh, palm router. Router table would have been so much easier, but it wasn't too bad. I just had to switch the, the bits out and make sure they were the correct depth every time and then set up that straight edge. It's pretty dang straight if I do say so myself. I'm gonna put a 45 degree chamfer on three sides only. I'll show you why. I'm just gonna measure over one inch from the edge, make a mark, same thing here, make a mark. And then I'm just gonna line up my blade and take off a one inch corner at a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna do that on the four corners. I should have done this before I put the chamfer on, but live and learn. Boom, there it is. I like it, I like it a lot. I have high hopes for this working better than the other two methods. That was so simple to do. It just took a little bit of time swapping those bits out. If you've got a router table, you'll, you'll be done with that in no time. Put a little paste wax on there. I prefer tray wax because it doesn't stink. Uh, Johnson's paste wax actually has a real bad smell. That tray wax doesn't. It helps it glide butter smooth on that table. I like it. So the way this works, I've got my board that I want jointed. I've got my dovetail clamps 
and we're just going to slide one in from the side. I've run this fence. I've run the fence uh, to where this sled is actually just beside the blade. Now you can actually attach a miter groove or a miter, um, what do they call that? You can actually attach a miter slot, a piece of board down through there, a three quarter inch piece of board, and make it run in the groove if you want. But for a jointing sled, you don't need it. Right? Because you're gonna be holding it pressure against the fence. And so all you wanna do is have that board overhang the, the, the sled itself. And so it's overhanging about an eighth inch maybe, uh, just a little bit wider than the blade. It doesn't really matter as far as which, what the alignment is so long as the blade cuts the entire board or cuts a strip off the board because it's just up in the air and it's gonna cut that edge off flush and then you're gonna flip it over, put it against the fence and run it through without the sled and that's gonna give you two parallel sides, which is what you're after. That makes me happy. That looks good, I like that. Boom, that's the best joint yet, jointing sled. Man, I should have built one of those a long time ago. The level works okay, but the jointing sled wins this challenge by far. It's easy, it's quick. Uh, I think if I put a miter slot under there, a, a board that actually runs in the miter slot or micro jig actually makes a 360 sled kit that'll actually attach to the bottom of this and you can use it that way. Now this can actually be a tapering jig also. So it's a multi-function jig. Uh, just as a bonus for you, if you want to use this as a tapering jig, all you need to do, if you had a board that you wanted to taper from say four and a quarter to three and three quarters, all you do is line it up your mark here. That's gonna be the cut line of your blade at four inches. And then back here, you're gonna make that mark at three and three quarter and clamp everything down. Really quick, the reason you keep this side square versus chamfering all four sides is you wanna leave one square side to reference for tapering. So if you're gonna have a, a board down here that's one inch and then up here it's four inches, you're gonna need something to, to reference that by. So this square edge will help you with that. If you're gonna be using this as a tapering jig, I would highly recommend either putting a zero play miter bar underneath so that it runs in this track or just cutting you a strip that fits in there like you would a, a table saw slit. Let's try it and see what happens. Look at that. <laughs> so simple, so simple. So if you're tapering legs, whatever you need to taper, tapering jig slash jointing jig slash. Now you've got a high fence. If, you're, if you need that for whatever reason, you got a board that's uh, taller and you're cutting a dado in it or cutting a rabbit in it or whatever, and you need a high fence, this just turned into a high fence. So this is a multi-purpose jig and you got that as a bonus for watching this video. I'm very happy with this sled. I, man, it just works so well. It's, uh, it's actually kind of an ingenious design that uh, Micro Jig come up with. I bought all this stuff. What really tipped me off this stuff was I have one of your viewers actually sent me the 360 sled kit. So just this piece here. When I got this, I started looking into it and saw that they had all of this other stuff, which was the dovetail bits, the relief bit, and then these clamps. And then I saw some videos. They've actually got a video on how to make this exact sled. I'll drop a link to that in the description below and you can go check that out. It has free plans, everything. And so you could actually make one of these for yourself using their guide. But this works really well. Uh, it works flawlessly to actually edge join a board and for tapering, things like that. It's going to be, uh, be a game changer for you if you've got a table saw. So I actually didn't come up with this idea. I saw it on a video by 3x3 Customs tomorrow over there. If you want to see how she does it, you can go check it out because she's working without a jointer as well. Double-sided tape. I don't have any, so I'm going to, for the video, improvise with a good old-fashioned duct tape. I would actually not recommend using duct tape for this because when you double it over like that, it's going to be really thick. That's why you should use double-sided tape. It'll all be really thin. But just for demonstration purposes, you're just going to take the tape on your sled or a piece of plywood is all this is going to be. You're going to take your board that you want jointed and just barely hang it over the edge of your plywood so that the blade's actually going to make the cut. And same thing down here, set on top of that tape. That's just going to keep everything from slipping and moving, uh, similar to what the clamps do on the sled. Once it's stuck, you should be able to just to run it through no problem. 
That easy. That is easy. Then all you'd have to do is just peel it up, take the double-sided tape off of your board. You've got a jointed edge. Now that I built the sled, it got me thinking. I know that's dangerous. Can I joint with the sled without a table saw? Just using a circular saw. Let's find out. So I'm just gonna clamp this two by six, two by six on here. Flip this over. This is gonna work, y'all. Who believes? You gotta believe in me. I believe, I believe. That's gonna work. It's gonna work. I believe I can fly. It's gotta work, right? I've been trying to think about how to do this for years. Kabam. Check this out. Who thinks this is gonna work? Boom! Ha <laughs> ha! That works. I'm a genius, I know. You can tell me, I, I don't mind. That works, that works well. And it's gonna be a good flat edge on this side. And now, uh, obviously you would need a table saw or something, or even a, uh, maybe the Craig Rip Cut could flip it over and, and use this side as a flat reference to yeah, I think that would work actually. And then you'd have two parallel edges and with a circular saw. Now it'd be hard to do with a two by four or anything smaller than a two by six. Uh, you could probably still do it, but it would just, it would be much harder to do. <laughs> it's flat. That's about as close as you're gonna get a rough cut board flat with a circular saw. And in case you don't know, a Craig Rip Cut is just a circular saw guide. Your, any circular saw fits in there and you can actually put it to say, you know, a couple inches. It'll go down to like one inch. And the circular saw will actually ride in here like this. And then you could actually reference this edge to cut this edge and you would have a two parallel sides jointing with a circular saw. Those other methods you can use if you don't have a jointer. If you do have a jointer, I want to throw this in the challenge just to see how it stacks up against, especially that sled, because that sled was For speed and convenience, obviously the jointer is gonna win. It, uh, once you clamp these together, the gap goes uh, non-existent. As you can see there, mash them together, and then of course I can slide them apart. That's really cool. I really like that this sled makes perfect flat edges. Perfect, they come together perfectly. As long as your blade is 90 degrees to your table, and as long as your board's not wobby jawed, sled's the way to go. Now, the taping method also, also, the taping method also works really well. You're just gonna have to stick and unstick every time, but that's an option for you if you don't wanna do T-Tracks or uh, the micro jig uh, match fit system. Match fit? Yeah. But now that I have this sled, I can use it for multiple uses, tapering, uh, high fence, and then also uh, jointing jig if need be, multi-use sled. So it, it's really, I think, the winner because you can actually do more than just joint with it. Hey, if you like this video, click that box right there. It's gonna take you to the next set of videos. Click in that box, get you that big old virtual fist pump. Also, if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and click that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out, especially if you just share this with somebody you know who may get value out of it. Thank you.